For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. We're right in the middle of the Democratic National Convention, proving that this election cycle is in full momentum. Last night, the Obamas would attract attention after giving speeches that will simultaneously endorse Kamala Harris and roast Donald Trump. After Barack's joke towards Trump, comedian Jeff Ross would respond by saying, perfect delivery. Now, while some people enjoyed the DNC, there were a few black Trump supporters that did not. Today, we have our very own comedy hype analyst, Lab Love and Marvin Hunter on the show to talk all about it. But before we get started, I must mention the upcoming Green Fest Festival, thrown by the HBCU Green Fund. Now, Green Fest will have music, food, spoken word, comedy, and activities for all ages on Saturday, September the 7th at Truly Living Well Farm in Atlanta. Please visit the Instagram page of the HBCU Green Fund for more information. Now, let's take a look at these clips. Here's a 78-year-old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down his golden escalator nine years ago. It has been a constant stream of, of gripes and grievances that, that's actually been getting worse now that he's afraid of losing to Kamala. There's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. It just goes on and on and on. Now, un unfortunately, we know what comes next. We know folks are going to do everything they can to distort her truth. My husband and I sadly know a little something about this. For years, Donald Trump did everything in his power to try to make people fear us. His limited, narrow view of the world made him feel threatened by the existence of two hardworking, highly educated, successful people who happen to be black. I want to know, who's going to tell him that the job he's currently seeking might just be one of those black jobs? Yo, I'm not going to lie, the DNC is so fucking lit. Like. That shit was super popping last night. DJ Cassidy killed it. Shout out to DJ Cassidy. Shout out to Lil John. Like they had Lil John there. This shit was fire. But I was thinking, Kamala should have a new slogan. It should be, let's manipulate Americans into thinking that everything is all good and everything is just funny and laughs and joke, cool ass music. And you know, while war veterans are broke, there's so many homeless people in America and people can't afford groceries or rent or to even go out with their friends anymore and have a good time. Illegal migrants are getting so much money in food stamps, taking over our hotels and schools. People are dying in war. You know, that should be her new slogan. I, I think she should put that on a hat. The damn Democrats at the DM, DNC are crazy as hell, shouting they're not going back. Hell no, I don't want to go back to open borders, high food prices, high gas prices, high inflation, high interest rate, can't even buy a damn home. Why? I don't want to go back, Kamala. That's why I'm not voting for you. I'm voting for Donald Trump. And who in the hell had agility or the stamina to stay up all night and to listen to Joe Biden? Joe Biden and all his damn lies. That's all he did was scream. It's more louder than I'm screaming right now. Man, I got to give y'all y'all props if y'all stayed up to watch Joe Biden. I thought that he might throw down and say something against the Democrats for orchestrating a coup against him. But no, he stayed on script line about Donald Trump and his lying ass. I'm tired of Joe Biden. I'm tired of Kamala. Now, of course, a lot of people, in addition to hearing from uh, Jeff, there have been a lot of people on Instagram, Twitter, all the things having these conversations live. I'm going to start with you. When you saw the comments from both uh, the Obamas, what, what's your reaction to it? Uh, I, I, I thought it was funny. I, I thought that, I mean, Barack has always been a great speaker. So has Michelle. So I think, I think they came in and they, they what, what we always say, they understood the assignment. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And so they, they did exactly what they was there to do. And, and I ain't mad at it. I, I, I liked it. I like both speeches. And I watched, watched both speeches in their entirety. Absolutely. Marvin, very interested to hear. You know, we've been talking about politics for a while. Mm -hmm. When you saw, uh, saw both of them, what, what was your reaction to it? I loved it, but it could have went further. Mm -hmm. They could have went further. I mean, the timing was, 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 was nice, but they could have went further. I know that they couldn't, 
You know, Obama and them were too classy. They too classy to get in the mud. They should have somebody there to get in the mud. Well, what, you know what, what would you want to have her? I want to talk about how his face looked like elbow, <laughs> knee, and feet meet. I want, I want, I want the whole shebang a bang. Like, let's get down in the mud, cause that's what he do. He operates with no boundaries. His people operate with no boundaries. We always want to take the high road. I don't give a damn about the high road. The high road is done. It's an obstruction now. It's yeah. a detour. Yeah. Forget that. Absolutely. Now, oh, where are you gonna? Did you want to? No, add no. Something? I was gonna say. So, so who do you think? Uh oh. Mm. Who do you think could have got down in there? Roland Martin. In, in, Roland could have. But is but but what Roland had been to, I like Roland. I yeah. think Roland here for all the smoke, one hundred percent. But but you think they would have said Roland was doing too much though? Of course some of them would have said it. I, I don't care. I mean Trump them do everything. Oh, you know I, what I'm saying? So so we, we we on this is my this is my problem with the Democrats. They too wussy. They too nice. It's always they they take the nice. high road. Damn a high road. Let's take the muddy road. Let's let's get get down. <laughs> get dirty. Let, let, let's get with the smoke. Let somebody get slapped. Out here, yeah. you know what I'm saying. I'm nope. just, no, no violence. Um, now speaking of doing too much, a lot of people felt like uh, the DNC was doing too much with the music and all the things. So I want to read a couple comments and get mm -hmm. your reaction to that. Uh, one person said, "Have y'all noticed that no one at the 2024 DNC spoke on or about pushing reparations for Black people?" Yet they're pandering hard AF to the black community. Let that set in. Someone else said the Democrats haven't even offered black folks anything other than black faces and white spaces in a great performance at the DNC. And is our liberation not tied together? Uh, Lab, I'm going to come to you. Open us up. What do you think? Why do you think people are, you know, being critical and saying, you know, that the DNC is pandering to black people? When we've seen this on the, the other side as well. Yeah, I, I think that... We a lot of times when people, us, when we say they never did anything for us, what they mean is you ain't did that for me, specifically. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, because your life is in shambles, mm -hmm. but you don't take no responsibility for how you put your life in shambles. And so somehow it's this boogeyman over here that got your life the way it is. So I think that's that piece of it. And at this point, one, the DNC is not over. Two, mm -hmm. Kamala has not done her speech where the last day, the, the, whoever's chosen, mm -hmm. that's what they do. They lay out their policies yeah. the last day. So the fact that that hasn't been done yet, that doesn't mean anything yet because that's, right. that's clearly coming because that's always been the format of it. And I just think that we, you can't get on national TV and say the heck with the rest of the country. Let me tell you about my niggas. You know what I'm saying? You can't, we, you just can't <laughs> And they criticized Kamala for that, for not, not saying like for yeah. black people. Yeah, like, I mean, and you, you can't do that. Even, I, even if a white dude got up and said, hey man, I'm here for the Jews. I just want to make sure the Jews is this. The backlash would be crazy. crazy. It would be crazy. It, it, it doesn't make it, any it sense. Would, it, would, it, would, it would be crazy. Clearly half of the country is racist. So if he got up there and yeah. said that he don't, I'm only here for the Jews, he would lose half the country immediately because we know that already. Yeah. So. And let me and, and let me say this. Come here, come here. I don't know if y'all can zoom. Yeah, zoom <laughs> in. Come here, come here, come here. Let me tell you something. I think we deserve reparations. You'll never get a president of the United States to ever come out and campaign on giving black people reparations. He would not win, or she would not win. It will never happen, even though I think we deserve it and we need it. That's not going to ever happen. So when I hear them say that, it's stupid. Yeah. It's stupid. You don't know my politics. You don't, you don't understand. That'll never happen. Yeah. Let me ask you a question because people are also talking about Michelle, which is crazy to me. And I think we've kind of had the conversation about other things like black people say they want this thing. But Michelle is like the most well put together, yep. intelligent, beautiful woman. Exactly. But you have people calling her monkey and like all this. You know what, man? Let me tell you something. If you if you a black person, if you a black dude specifically and you call him Michelle Obama monkey and transvestite, you are a trash human being. You are a fecal smear of an organism. You really are, man. It, it's ridiculous because what you're doing is you're aligning yourself with white people because they started that stuff racist. White people calling her that and then you're going, yeah, I agree with you. And it's, it's, it's stupid. Yeah. Why would you do that? Yeah. And regardless if you agree with uh, her husband's policies, you cannot not deny that the Obamas are very classy. Yeah. Very classy. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it makes no sense for you to do that. Absolutely. Now I want to play one more clip for you all and get, a, get your reaction on it. Let's take a look at this clip. The damn Democrats at the DMC are crazy as hell, shouting they're not going back. 
Hell no, I don't want to go back to open borders, high food prices, high gas prices, high inflation, high interest rate, can't even buy a damn home. Why? I don't want to go back, Kamala. That's why I'm not voting for you. I'm voting for Donald Trump. And who in the hell had agility or the stamina to stay up all night and to listen to Joe Biden? Joe Biden and all his damn lies. That's all he did is scream is more louder than I'm screaming right now. Man, I got to give y'all y'all props if y'all stayed up to watch Joe Biden. I thought that he might throw down and say something against the Democrats for orchestrating a coup against him. But no, he stayed on script line about about Donald Trump and his lying ass. I'm tired of Joe Biden. I'm tired of Kamala. I have my own thoughts. I just need to take a moment. Uh, lab, I'm gonna you. I felt your Boy. Go ahead, I'll open. It's floor. First of all, that S and that T kicked her ass. Kicked her ass. It kicked her ass. She, she couldn't get that S and that T out. She had an obstruction in her mouth. Yeah. So you had a obstruction oh, yeah. in her mouth. Yeah. So, so there's that part. And then thing number two is, see, this kill me when people talk about stuff they don't really know. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the interest rates and all this stuff right here, first of all, interest rates and all of this shot up because of a pandemic. And then interest rates now are at record. They're, they're starting to come back down. Mm -hmm. They're coming back down under Biden. So when you talk about food prices, again, all those things happen because we had a pandemic. That is why those things shot up. Then you're talking about you don't want to go back. First of all, they're talking about going back to these policies that were hurting you. So you got a problem with going back, but you don't have a problem with making America great again. Mm -hmm. And when America was great again for white men, your ass was in chains. Yeah. Your ass couldn't drink out of certain water fans. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Your exactly. ass was a second class citizen. That's the great America that they talking about that you you all gung ho to vote for. Hey, if you don't sit your goof ass down somewhere. And they don't understand it, it, it's ridiculous because like, you know, I was telling y'all before, like, you know, I, I know a dude who said they ain't did nothing for me. I still got potholes in front of my street. Self. Negro. <laughs> What you think the president's supposed to come down and fix your street? Yeah. Mm. That's what you feel? But that's a lot of people. They, they think yeah. like that. If my life personally yeah. is not going with how I'm supposed to, it's the president's fault. Why do you think that is? Why do you, th why do you think Stupid. there is that? Because there's, yeah. But then there's also like, you know, local elections. We, we never hear people yeah. talking about that. Yeah, they don't we go to that. They, they, they never. I'll give you an example. In my, my neighborhood, I'm, I'm zone rule. So there was an 18-wheeler being parked on the grass. And I saw the 18 wheeler parked on the grass. I was like, dang, why would you do that? That's so ghetto, da da da. And so the, I called code enforcement as they had been doing it for like two weeks. And so the lady was like, yeah, we heard about that, but we zone rules, so it's okay, it's not a problem with that. But clearly, I wasn't the only person complaining about that. So about a week to two weeks later, the city council passed the ordinance that made it illegal to park that 18 wheeler on the grass. So the change in our neighborhood and the change that everybody wanted happened in a two week period with local government. Local. Mm -hmm. yep. And there's people out here complaining about the system. You don't know who your city councilman is. Nope. You don't know who your mayor is. Nope. You ain't never been to no city council meeting before. Mm -hmm. You know none of these people. You don't even mm -hmm. know the state representative nope. that covers your area, but you out here angry. Yeah. And, and you I complaining, but you not even participate in this system that you mad about. This is. Uh -huh. it, 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 it works your nerves. It works your nerves. I'm at the point, like the lady you just played, I'm not interested in trying to com convert nobody. Yeah, I know no. I, should, I shouldn't say that, but I don't care if you vote. I'm going to vote. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm not sitting up here going to argue with nobody, man. She's already, she already has a mind made up. That's her. She do whatever she's going to do. Right. You know, I'm not going to sit up here and do that. I'm not going to dignify stupidity with that debate. And that's why I tell people online all the time. People say, social media, messing with my mental health. Well, why are you going back and forth, people? Right. <laughs> Block Get off. Block them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get off. You're grown. Block them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, I want to play one more video. Then, Lab, I actually, I want to talk about, speaking of social media, I want to talk about something on your social media. But first, let's take a look at this last clip. Black women in Chicago were asked if they like Kamala Harris, and this answer ripped my face off. No, she's half black, not fully black, but uh, it'll be yeah, cool to see a black president, a female black president, but I'm, I'm definitely voted for Trump. Let's go, Trump. If you look at her past mm -hmm. things, and maybe 10, 15 years ago, she identifies as West Indian. She does, she The does only not way that she's identified as African-American is right now, because she wants the voters, but she doesn't give a fuck. 
Where was she at in these past four years and she's vice president? What has she done for us? Can you say one thing that I didn't even know she was the vice president? Let's go, Trump. They're having Megan the Stallion swerve and all of that because they think that that's going to make us vote for them. And that will never get my vote. Swerking, Meg the Stallion, that's first off, the that's song ignorant. that she was even saying is very ignorant. I'm, I'm gonna try to roll into this because it, 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 it does <laughs> aggravate me like ignorance sometimes just aggravates me because so many times people pay attention to headlines that are like constantly being ran not knowing that sometimes people can create Instagrams people can pay people to like put things in front of you so that you can believe it so it just makes me feel and, and I'm coming to you and talking about your Instagram post as well that people are focused more on feelings than the actual facts because I saw your post mm -hmm. where you had facts behind you and when we were talking, I kind of heard you like how people responded to you with feelings of other people oh, yeah. and that's yeah. what I feel like I'm hearing from clips yeah. like this. Like, what are we seeing, Lab? I, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I don't even first know. First of all, see, if words matter. <sighs> she says Kamala identifies that's as West, West Indian. Indian. Mm -hmm. First of all, West Indian is in the Caribbean. Her mother is Indian from India. Those genius. are not the same type you of genius. Indians. Genius. But then you want to say somebody is ignorant. You are ignorant. So let's, let's, that's that piece of it. But yeah, feelings of people, feelings over facts. Like, you know, they, they, they come at her and they use these things. Like one of the things that's on my page, I was talking about, you know, uh, she she made a statement, you know, I, I won't do any legislation specifically for black people. I, you, I, you won't hear me say that. And so then people like, well, why we can't get no legislation specifically for us? You you did it for the Asians. No, no, they didn't. You, the, the, it was it was a COVID-19 hate bill is what it was. And it has been nicknamed the Asian hate bill because it was meant to the spirit of it is meant to stop the hate against Asians. Donald Trump said that China caused mm. COVID, so people start attacking Asian people. Like, this is why we going through COVID, because yep. y'all, mm -hmm. yep. all Asians, you know, because we racist, so we don't know that all Chinese, every Asian is not Chinese. Mm -hmm. You got right. Japanese, <laughs> Koreans, <laughs> a whole different bunch of Asians. But I digress. So, and I put that out there and I addressed and I told them that it was not specifically that. Pete, they passed laws that the spirit is to help certain groups. Without a doubt, they do that. Mm -hmm. And when they pass those laws, you know, they're not going to call it the African-American Civil Rights Bill. They just call it the Civil Rights Bill. Mm -hmm. They're not going to call it the, the Jewish Hate Bill. They're just going to call it the Jewish Bill and then give, and put the things in it to help the people that it wants to help. Because you just can't do that. And when we get upset and people are responding with other people's pages but it's other people's opinions. That has nothing to do with the mm -hmm. fact that this bill is not called an Asian hate bill. Right. You can't yeah. change that fact that that's not what this is. And also, they, they say, well, you did it for the gays, but they did do it for the gays. They, they, yeah, they did they, do they, it for they the gays. The LGBT, you know what, what it was was they added the LGBT, they added a protection under the current civil rights bill mm -hmm. for the LGBT. Plus, and I, I know I'm leaving out some letters. Alphabet. Yeah, yeah. The alphabet people, they, yeah. they, they added them as to one of the identified, they specifically identified them, just like in civil rights bills, they identify minority mm -hmm. groups. Yeah. So they added them to those. But there is not a specific bill for them. Like people are saying there was. So yeah. when you say they did it for them, no, they didn't. And then I heard somebody say, well, they let them get married. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious, dog? Are you, if, why do you even care about why that? Why do you even care? Yeah, it, it blows my mind too, especially when I do hear the rhetoric of like Kamala saying like, oh, she's not going to do anything for black people. I just, I don't think, first of all, take, take policies, like just common sense, a black woman coming on a, a stage like the Breakfast Club, mm -hmm. who has that large of an audience mm -hmm. to say, hey, I'm a black woman and I'm only going to do something for black people. Like I personally just, given history, I feel like they would take her out. I just feel like she wouldn't be able to it get elected. I, yeah, it yeah, has shown be, black people yeah. that stand loudly for black people. They take them out every time. So when I see people talking about, oh, Malcolm X, and like, what happened? Like, come on, like, yeah. let's talk. Like, if we're going to talk about it, let's talk about it. But let's be smart, too. So and, people, I just, and, like, and, 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 and Malcolm X is not all the way black. And but people and you, love and you want to say about what she at first, I don't care. I don't Neither give a damn. Bob Marley. Right. Yeah, I don't give a damn that's, if she's purple. Yeah. With webbed feet. Yeah. She ain't the orange man. Correct. She ain't elderly homelander. And it doesn't negate what Malcolm <laughs> It doesn't negate what Malcolm X 
yeah, did, what he exactly. stood for. Whereas we get so hung up on like, oh, you know, the girl saying like, oh, well, she's not black, black. But like you said, a Malcolm X, Bob Marley. These are huge figures in our community, but they still did what they did for the yeah. community, regardless of what's, Hold on. What's, what's the light-skinned white? actor who gave the speech? I think it was at the BT. What, what's his name? Jesse Williams. Jesse Williams. Mm -hmm. we, they oh, went crazy. crazy. Oh, Jesse, you stand for black people. Right? Yeah. Jesse mixed. Yeah. yeah. So what are we really mad at? Jesse mixed. Yep. You know what I mean? People in our society, <sighs> niggas, like, what, you know, it's weird. Uh, let me ask you, let me ask you something, Sam. Do you think that black people just complain to complain? Are we natural contrarians? I do. I do feel like it because I feel like we've gone through a lot as a people and I get it. It's like some things I get, but sometimes we're just upset because of this thing that's in the back of our head, whether it's mm -hmm. PTSD. I know once we were having a conversation, mm -hmm. whether it's like PTSD or whatever it is, it's like the natural instinct is to question it, which is fine. I don't have an issue with the questioning, but my thing is when you question and just put it out there. You don't question and go do research. You don't question and ask que like ask questions. Mm -hmm. You're just questioning just to complain and then, I, oh, I'm upset, but what are you doing? What are you doing about it once you question it? What are, what are your thoughts? Hey, I, I think one, I, I think we question stuff. We skeptical as hell. And I think one of the reasons why we're skeptical as hell is because we have been failed. The system, so many systems in our country have failed us. The mm -hmm. medical Absolutely. system has failed us. The, the political system is failing us. Uh, the, the law enforcement is failing us. So we, we get failed on, on so many different levels. So I get how we can be skeptical. But the problem is when you address the skepticism with facts, Mm -hmm. We still don't want to listen to the facts. We lost, that. What's we that? Lost but still, still, but yeah, yeah, man, yeah, but, yeah still. But, but still, though, no, ain't no, but still, yeah. dog, ain't no, but still. But what, what, I, it, it seems to me that Negroes don't like Negroes that too many other Negroes like. Hmm. It's like it's a ceiling, you know what I'm saying, for your popularity. Once you cross a line, it's like we coming for you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like your know, people say, we ain't got no leaders. We ain't got no good black leaders. We got plenty of people that are smart, brilliant black people. They're not gonna throw themselves into that meat grinder yeah. because they know they're gonna get destroyed by our own people. Yeah, and and the thing is, I don't want to take away from us as if like we don't, we're not continuously still going through the things because you do have platforms that are still feeding that crab in the barrel mm -hmm. mentality mm -hmm. that are trying to set people up. DJ Vlad, try to set people up to like <laughs> go, you know, go head get go head to head or like just talk about one another, but it does come to a point where we have to take responsibility to say, you know, okay, enough is enough. Like, I have to stop blaming the white man, the system, but even the... If, when you request, for example, when they, when they say, well, she said she wasn't black. I have done it a million times. Mm -hmm. Send me the video where she said she wasn't black. Correct. Send me the video. They can't do it, or, or the, or the do article it. or whatever where she said she wasn't black. Yeah. Can't Nobody it. can send you no, that. No. no. What it's they will weird. send you is the video where she say, with well, the chick, they was cooking and she said, I'm Indian, I'm Indian. But she is. It's She's too both. many distractions, bro. It's too many people bringing up too much stuff and yep. it's just murking the waters. It's like black people are under attack. We've yep. always been under attack. It's like we exist in a fort. Right? The enemy is outside the gate. We inside preparing to fight the enemy. We can't fight the enemy because a nigga over here breakdancing. Yeah. And another nigga over here building a goddamn go-kart. We, 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 we got to address all this stuff when the enemy is at the gate. Correct. That is it. A lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. As always, I appreciate you both for chiming in on this topic. I'm still trying to process these videos. And obviously, <laughs> the last two videos, that was my first time seeing it, which also, my apologies. <laughs> I, I just... It's just some things I'm just like, man, like, oh, uh, read a book, read the, like, read what's actually in the lines and not just the headline. But anyway, I, I know. I'm, oh, I All right. Well, let's talk about what y'all have coming up because my brain is obviously somewhere else. Marv, I'm coming to you. What do you have coming up? Hey. This is a one hour special. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so October, excited for you. October the 19th at the Rock of Mountain, or Red Mountain Theater in Birmingham. I'll be shooting my hour special. I can't wait. Absolutely. And how can people follow you on social media? Get at me at Comedian Marvin H1. That's Comedian Marvin H1 on TikTok and Instagram and Marvin Hunt on Facebook. Absolutely. Mr. Lav Love, what do you have coming up? How can people follow you? Uh, I'll be at BQE this Wednesday, uh, Monday Solo this Friday. Uh, also follow me, uh, Comedian Lav Love, L-A-V-L-U-V, -L Comedian Lav Love. Follow me. And it's in Atlanta, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's right here in the ATL. So if you in Atlanta, mm -hmm. BQE and Monticello's is right here in the I ATL. I think I might pop up tonight. Come through. Yeah, no, no doubt. Gotcha. Come on, come no on. Doubt. And last, last, and last and certainly not least, yeah, we talk like that podcast. Yeah, we talk like that podcast. Myself, Ballhead, Steve Brown, and Sean Larkins. We shows our natural ass. Hey, y'all doing? I, I appreciate it. I appreciate y'all commentary and the information and the facts. 
that y'all bring, not just the feelings. Mm -hmm. So as always, I appreciate you both for chiming in on this topic, but you heard from us. Now we want to hear from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts about people responding and reacting to the DNC? And also remember, bring the entire family and stop by the Comedy Hype booth to say hello at the HBCU Green Funds Green Fest for music, comedy, food, and spoken word. Until next time for Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson.